No, you don't have to look directly at the sun and never look at any light. So bright it is painful to view. That said, you can wear a brimmed hat, sunglasses, and remain in the shade and expect to wake up. That said, you cannot wear a brimmed hat, sunglasses, and remain in the shade and expect to wake up. So I do do this most of the time. My boyfriend does this every morning. Basically, like, the ideal way to do this is, you know, within, he says, um, he says, like, within 30 to 60 minutes of waking up, but ideally, if you can do it within, like, 10, 15 minutes, just go outside in your front yard or your patio or your balcony and, like, look toward the horizon, and that will wake you up. I think it has an effect on, like, your adre adrenal glands. <laughs> But don't quote me on that. And it's basically like setting your circadian rhythm. So if you're having a hard time going to sleep like early or at the time that you would like, doing this will set it so that you start going to sleep earlier. So if you do this over like a week or two, you will notice a difference. Of course, like there's other factors as well. But this one I think works really well. And I personally like... If I go do that first thing in the morning, it also helps with any anxiety or grogginess. It just, like, makes me feel better. Okay. Number two. Wake up at the same time each day and go to sleep when you first start to feel sleepy. Pushing through the sleepy late evening feeling and going to sleep too late, whatever that is for you, is one reason people wake up at 3 a.m. and can't fall back asleep. So, yeah, try to, like, set an alarm, even if it, you know, is kind of a pain at first. Pick a time and just get up at that time. Just make yourself get up and don't sleep in half an hour or whatever. And, like, set a bedtime, even if it's a pain. Just be, just, like, set an alarm. Say it's, like, 10.30 or 11 or 9 or midnight or whatever that is for you. And set an alarm at first, maybe, and... When that goes off, just go to bed, um, go lay down, and, um, yeah, that will help also deal with, some, um, like, not waking up a lot in the middle of the night. Again, like, for more details as to why this is the fact, the case, go to his podcast. He also has, like, citations that are all pure, reviewed research, um, on, on all of this stuff, so I'm just giving you, like, the highlights. But yeah, if you want more really detailed information about why these things are as they are, you gotta go um, look at the research or listen to this podcast. Number three, avoid caffeine within eight to ten hours of bedtime. Um, a sleep expert from UC Berkeley, Matt, Wal Dr. Matt Walker, would suggest also 12 to 14 hours. He says that he does fine with caffeine at 2 p.m. and he goes to sleep at 10 to 11, but that's just him. So, yeah, like, I would say, like, definitely eight hours before you plan to go to bed. Don't drink any coffee. So, for most people, that's, like, around 1 or 2 in the afternoon or, like, 3. But, yeah, late afternoon, just stay away from caffeine. And that's, you know, caffeinated drinks, things that also, like, things that are very sugary can have that effect. Um, number four, if you have sleep disturbances, insomnia, or anxiety about sleep, oh yes, an app that he's suggesting, try the research-supported protocols on Reverie app. That's for iPhones. That's called R-E-V-E-R-I app. Do the Reverie sleep hypnosis three times a week. At any time of day, it's only 15 minutes long. And it'll help you rewire your nervous system. So I'm not being paid to read this. I'm not, I'm not being paid by this Reverie app. I don't know if uh, they're sponsoring him. Um, let me see. I don't know if this self-hypnosis stuff that Reverie app has is the same. Um, but I would also suggest, like, looking up an N, as in, um, new, N-S-T-R protocol, non-sleep, deep rest, I, well, that has, like, a bunch of, like, 
good benefits. It's used for rewiring um, your neural network so that you can better focus, that you can retain information if you're learning. And it also helps with um, with um, like after you've worked out or done something strenuous for like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not restructuring, but fixing, like rebuilding muscle tissue. And also learning, you must, like anything you're learning, be it like something for school or a new physical skill too. If you take, it's basically like this, a certain style of um, meditation, I guess. You can find videos online about it. It's very similar to a practice called Yoga Nidra. You can look up Yoga Nidra or an STR. And basically it's like a 15 to 20 minute meditation where you're laying down and you just follow this protocol and you feel like you're falling asleep but you're not really asleep and I was using this when I was studying for some exams and it worked great and even if you're just like tired but like still have a bunch of stuff to do in the rest of the day but you're mentally exhausted it feels like you've taken like a four hour it like feels great you feel like you're so refreshed so I don't know if this reverie app has the same stuff there is also a, um, for real, uh, hyp um, hypnosis does work. It's not like in, you know, like in the movies or whatever, but self-hypnosis for anxiety or sleep, uh, insomnia, and a variety of other things does exist. And I often use another great YouTuber. Um, I think it's Michael Seeley, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Sealy, S-E-A-L-Y. Um, he was also suggested on one of the Hubert Men Lab episodes, and he works great for that kind of, um, like, nap, th nap uh, hypnosis. Um, if you want to do just, like, 10 to 15 minutes of that. Um, so basically, yeah, like, doing the, like, I guess, different types of self-hypnosis that are short will help you rewire your nervous system. Okay. I guess you'd have to, like, look a little, a little more into that. Um, because he doesn't get too much into it here. And I'm not quite sure which protocol he's talking about. Um, number five. Avoid viewing bright lights, especially bright overhead lights, between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. So I'm sure a lot of you already know that, like, looking at your phone or is, like, before going to bed or screens is not good. But also just having, like, lights on in your house is not good. And it doesn't even matter what time um, you're going to bed. But, like... Regardless, even if you're going to bed at midnight or one or whatever, um, you should stop having bright lights or even like almost any light if possible, just like dim lights from 10 p.m. on. It will really change things for you. Um, what does he say? He says, here's a simple rule. Only use as much artificial light as is necessary for you to remain and move about safely at night. Blue blockers can help a bit at night, but still dim the lights. Viewing bright lights of all colors are a problem for your circadian rhythm. Candlelight and moonlight are fine. Shift workers should see the Huberman Lab um, podcast on jet lag. For offsetting shift work, negative effects. Same for jet lag travelers. <coughs> Okay, the next um, technique is limit daytime naps to less than 90 minutes or don't nap at all. I love, he says, I love naps as do many of my colleagues. I tend to nap for 30 minutes most afternoons, maybe 45, but never longer. So me personally, 
especially if I am trying to really keep a schedule and am feeling, you know, like my days are filled and I have a lot of things I need to do and I don't want to burn out, I will do like a 20 minute nap or a 20 minute NSTR protocol. Um, and it works fine and I go to sleep fine later. Um, when it's my bedtime and it doesn't even matter what time I do that whenever I need it usually like at 2 or 3 but um, that works fine but yeah like going and sleeping for like 3 hours or something in the afternoon or 2 hours it's just not a good idea it's just gonna mess you up okay number 7 if you wake up in the middle of the night which by the way is normal to do once or so each night, but you can't fall back asleep. Consider doing an NSTR protocol when you wake up. Um, so that's this protocol I've been talking about, and he also says that you can look up NSTR on YouTube, and the top three to four options have different voices, durations, or you can look up Yoga Nidra. So he doesn't get into why doing this at night when you wake up and can't fall back asleep helps, but I can imagine just having done it myself. It's kind of, I mean, my experience of at least what it feels like, I don't know neurologically what's going on exactly, but it does feel very similar to like listening to, just listening to ASMR or something kind of hypnotic or listening to sleep hypnosis. Um, it seems to help, but I think this protocol specifically has slightly different has a slightly different effect on your neural pathways than than some of um, some other things. Okay, number eight. You might consider taking thirty to sixty minutes before. Oh, sorry. These are some supplements he suggests, but he always also says um, to you know talk to your doctor do your own research and he always says that he's not like you know telling people to do anything these are just like things you can do and the research shows that you know it does work but every person's different and again same like I've used just one of these I've used magnesium um, so he says if you're really having a lot of trouble sleeping you might consider taking an hour or half an hour before bed, 145 milligrams of magnesium threonate or 200 uh, milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate, I think I'm pronouncing that right, or 50 milligrams of apigenin swanson, I think that's a brand, a uh, supplement brand, Swanson is the only source I know of, and we have no affiliation to Swanson, he says. Or 100 to 400 milligrams of theanine, or 3 to 4 nights per week. He also takes 2 grams of glycine and 100, gram, milligram, 100 milligrams of GAPA. He also says that he would start with one supplement, supplement only, and then only add other ones as needed. Some people do not need any supplements, and some people like theanine but not magnesium, etc. So you have to determine what is best for you. He also says, do not take theanine if you have overly intensive dream, intense dreams, if you sleepwalk or have night terrors, so if you sleepwalk, have night terrors, or have very intense dreams, do not take theanine. Also, like he says that some people, more or less 5% of the population, get an agitated stomach from magnesium supplementation, in which case do not take it. I personally do take magnesium every once in a while. Um, it helps relax me. It's also like, can be good for like, um, digestive issues if you have to go to the bathroom and are having problems with that. I mean, it's not like very, I guess it depends on each person, but it's not like super intense or anything. But again, like if you do have, you know, stomach issues or you take it and you like really 
notice that it makes you feel not good, don't do it again. Um, and again, I just want to emphasize that um, any, any supplements you take, you should do some research on that supplement. You should talk to your doctor, potentially. You should have an understanding of your own, like, allergies, uh, blood work. Um, also, do all, all brands are not the same. You should, even though in the U.S., um, there is no FDA approval of supplements, you can still look at the packaging and do some research on your own to see the reviews on the product, to see the purity of the product. And there is also a supplement certification that's like um, part of that industry that is often indicated on the packaging. So again, like, you know, look into it, but you know, just, just be careful. And I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, you know, do things wisely. Okay, number nine, expect to feel really alert about an hour before your natural bedtime. This is a naturally occurring spike in wakefulness that sleep researchers have observed. Don't freak out, it happens, it will pass. So after like reading this, I noticed it in myself. I usually go to bed at like 10.30 or 11. And I notice that like at nine, I'll be like, whoa, I'm really awake. I'm not going to go to sleep. But I've learned that that's just for whatever reason. And I think he does talk about why. Um, or you can like look it up. But there's research on this. It's just like a natural spike before your bedtime. So I don't try to like exacerbate it or anything. And then really get awake. Just like keep doing whatever you're doing. And plan to go to bed anyways. And it'll, it'll like wear off and you'll just, you'll get sleepy when you're supposed to. Okay, number 10. Keep the room you sleep in cool and dark. Layer on blankets that you can remove. Your body needs to drop in temperature one to two, oh, I'm sorry. It needs to drop in temperature by one to three degrees to fall asleep and stay asleep effectively. Body temperature increases are one reason you wake up. Thus, keep your room cool and remove blankets as needed. If it's too hot, you would have to use a cooling device. And that's harder than simply tossing off blankets. So I'm usually someone who's always cold and I prefer staying warm. But I have noticed that when it's like not cold, but like not overly warm, I do sleep better. So I just make sure, like, if I'm afraid I'm going to be cold, just to put on, like, a cozy, like, a warm pajama or whatever you wear to bed. And just make sure you have, like, enough blankets that you aren't going to feel cold and you can always push them off. And it does help. I mean, like, I'm sure you've noticed how hard it is to fall asleep when it's really hot in the summer. That's one of the reasons why. Um, okay, number 11. Drinking alcohol messes up your sleep, as do most sleep medications. So he really gets into this, but he strongly suggests that you do not drink alcohol close to your bedtime, especially not on a regular basis, especially not if you're trying to fix your insomnia or sleep issues. He also does say that melatonin is not really great for you and kind of and he talks about why and like strongly suggests that you don't use that and suggests the supplements I've mentioned earlier instead of melatonin. Again, um, he mentions one of the episodes in which he talks about this. He says, this is discussed in the Huberman Lab podcast episode with Dr. Matt Walker. Okay. Um, let's see how many more. Oh, and this is the last one. Okay. Number 12, kids and, um, kids and indeed all of us have changing sleep needs over time. Adjust accordingly. We might be night owls at 15, but come morning people as we age or need six hours a night in summer and seven to eight in the winter, it 
Well, Fairy, that is so true. I used to be kind of a night owl. I now am a morning person. I need my eight hours of sleep. I guess I've always needed them. But definitely as you get older, you will feel the deprivation of sleep more strongly. Um, but he says, you know, just, um, just be aware that like everyone is not exactly the same. You know, most studies say six to seven, uh, six to eight hours are good. If you need like nine, don't freak out. If you, six is enough, don't freak out. And you know, we change with age. Um, and then he like, he closes with this. He says, um, again, sleep is the foundation of all mental and physical health and performance in all endeavors. Yet no one is perfect about sleep. The occasional night out or missing sunlight viewing here and there is not a big deal, so don't obsess. However, if any of you of us drift from these and other behaviors for too long, we start to suffer. So whatever your life and goals and schedule, master your sleep. You'll be so happy you did. And it is so true. He's helped make it my sleep schedule. Like down pat. It's not that I wasn't sleeping enough, but maybe I wasn't really sleeping at the exact times that my body needed or with the consistency that I really needed. And it, and like using a lot of these protocols personally, it's been a game changer. I have just become just more, um, more awake. I've had less issues with mood swings and like, know, depressive states. I've become more, like, happily productive. I'm way less stressed than I used to be. Like, I cannot, um, I cannot say enough about, well, one is podcast, which is great, and again, I have no affiliation. He doesn't know I'm doing this. Um, but I just, I love him. Um, he's great. And also just, like, the importance of sleep, which, I mean, yeah, I have an ASMR channel, obviously. ASMR has helped me a lot in the past, and I've clearly had like issues with sleep or stress or anxiety myself in the past. Um, so yeah, I want to put as much info out there for people to just lead healthier lives. And um, we're all here because, you know, relaxation and sleep matter to us, right? So um, I hope that this has been um, very informative for you, and at the same time relaxing. Um, just know that there are great sources out there if you're struggling. And again, um, if you want, you can go check him out, either on YouTube or on whatever podcast um, application you use. His name is Dr. Andrew Huberman, and the podcast is called Huberman Labs, and I give them two thumbs up. So let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video, and if you would like other health tips of this type, um, please comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, I was interested in doing similar videos with some of his other lists of techniques for all sorts of different, you know, lifestyle, health things. So yeah, please, if you enjoyed, give a thumbs up to this video. And if you have any comments or questions, please just leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day or a very peaceful sleep this evening.